We have this clip here from Tucker as well. Vivek tweeted a clip I want to play for you guys. I'll just play it. You know, my parents came to this country with almost no money. I've gone on to found multi-billion dollar companies. And then people tell me, oh, that's because you had privilege. <laughs> they tell me white privilege. It's sort of weird. It's sort of an interesting. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Do you, do you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> Tucker's great. I, 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 I say, take the blindfold off. <laughs> and, and, and do you tell them? <laughs> but, but the interesting answer is, actually what I do tell them, Tucker, is that I did have privilege. I didn't grow up in money. But I had two parents in the house, a mother and a father, with a focus on education and a faith in God. And you know what? That is the ultimate privilege. That if I'm going to enjoy that, every kid in this country ought to enjoy it too. So we have, from that clip, and the reason I wanted to play it is I'm going to refresh for you right now the prediction markets for the GOP presidential nomination, which currently has Vivek Ramaswamy at 13 cents, Ron DeSantis at 15, and Trump at 62. Trump, the clear front runner. Let's refresh it and see where we're at. And... Vivek has dropped down by one cent. Ron DeSantis has gone up by one cent. These things are very much in flux, considering uh, the, these clips are still going around right now. But Vivek Ramaswamy is, has skyrocketed. I mean, if we take a look at this, let's go to 90 days in the prediction market. Take a look at this. He's jumping. He is climbing the ranks. DeSantis is dropping down rather quickly. I do think, and again, these are not polls. But I think the people who are tracking the political landscape who are making bets on what is going to uh, what the outcome is going to be. I think we're very close to seeing Vivek Ramaswamy take second place relatively soon. I think that like what like what Vivek said uh, at the very end, like I'm an agnostic and I agree with him. <laughs> like, oh, hands down. You that know? clip was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Fam family and I, privilege. That's why he's advancing in the polls like this because he speaks i think that he speaks in a very um authentic way he doesn't sound like a politician i don't think or at least he doesn't come across like a politician to people because he does sound very polished but i don't feel like he's just delivering the the a narrative kind of line um and maybe that's my own personal opinion because i i'm rather i find his 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 arguments compelling so I, I like listening to him i yeah. mean I, I think all his arguments are compelling i just everything he his uh he wants to dismantle the government in various pieces and i think what he says a lot is, is some smart solutions so i'm happy that he's getting this out to get a little bit more name recognition and i'm surprised that desantis has fallen so much but you know he has so much negative attention now that i mean with with Disney, whether you're right or wrong, and his anti-cannabis, whether that's right or wrong, he's just kind of like just, yeah. just driving it into the ground. Yeah, you know, look, don't ask me why. You know, I've got my opinions on on these things, but uh, uh, what I've been saying to many DeSantis supporters is just look at the prediction markets and the polls. He's going down. Okay, uh, that is not for me wanting to happen. I think he's he's an excellent leader who really has his ear to the ground on all these issues. But I think he's doing a very terrible job campaign wise. But even if you think I'm wrong, I, I just I'm, I'm curious why he's in this decline. If you ignore it, it'll only get worse. Yeah. And his wife's a a, a, a perfect running mate for him. Like she's she's out. Um, um, she's well polished and so she she's adding i think a lot of value but then at the same time he's obviously crashing not enough value who do you guys want uh i would libertarian li libertarian well you're, you're libertarian too Phil. man if, uh vivek and rfk made it i i feel like the america wins but to, to just uh just to voting why rfk though I'm, I'm a big fan of him. Just uh, well, well, he's got a big, long history of very authoritarian positions. Disavow. Disavow. <laughs> no, I. You know, here's what I would say personally: for the Democrat leadership, he's the best they got. Yeah. Because yeah. with all his bad policies, he's better than all the rest. Way better. You know, so I, I would love to see that. But and so for me, it's kind of like uh, I'm. I'm not a big Al libertarian, libertarian party kind of guy. I'm actually more like fairly liberal on the political spectrum. So I look at an RFK Jr. like, you know, I think he's really trying to be a populist. He's really trying to reach the people. And uh, he, he's speaking about a lot of uh, uh, current issues that are good. So we, we've talked about the power of like a Trump Kennedy ticket. But uh, I don't want to ask you about Republicans because, you know, you're, you're libertarian. Is mm -hmm. there is there a liber is there someone you want to see run for the libertarian ticket? Uh, ooh. I've seen a couple people who are running for the libertarian ticket. But yeah, I don't quite feel that they're quite ready who's for announced? the task huh who's announced for the libertarians chase 
Oh, Chase is from uh, from uh, Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Chase Oliver. Yeah, um, Chase I, Oliver. Yeah, yeah, I believe he's announced. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I know who he is. I followed him in the Georgia election. I know where he got his spotlight from with the the whole uh, Senate election. But you know, Shane Hazel did it the year before. I did it the same year as Shane Hazel did in North mm-hmm. Carolina. You know, getting three percent and breaking the uh the barrier and you know switching the election it, it happens every year somewhere uh, along the line and that's really kind of what he's riding i don't really know enough about him i don't agree with them on some of the uh qia issues the lgbt you know yeah the, which can it chase yeah yeah I, you know libertarians tend not to really agree with each other you know yeah, you know, a lot of them just say, uh, you know, banning like, things, aren't, yeah. Yeah, banning <laughs> things aren't good. But at the same time, we live in a society where you just can't run amok. Yeah, um, I love I love that meme, though, with Groundskeeper Willie. And he's like, libertarians, they ruined libertarianism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, the, the first thing that or the best way to know that you're an actual libertarian is another libertarian says you're not a real libertarian. That's, that's right. That's it. You know? Yeah. We're we're, start, we're we're getting into it right now. I, I know a lot of people have said, "Oh, it's so early. We're only a few weeks in for a lot of these candidates." But uh, this is where the pickup happens because the primaries are coming. I think what March yeah. mm-hmm. of next year. So that's gonna be a big deal. It is a very very big deal historically that Joe Biden is even facing a primary as the incumbent with one more term available to him. That's surprising. I don't. I mean, it's. I think that it's surprising that there are people that are kind of speaking up but at at the same time it's also su- surprising that he's actually the president because he's it's really clear that he's not the guy running the show well, he's a puppet yeah i mean we've got it's run by the the bureaucracy the existing <laughs> bureaucracy and it's not joe biden that's making the calls i mean He's the perfect candidate for him. <laughs> yeah, but not anymore. No, I mean in the future because he's not in charge. Yeah, I, I wonder if the, the the reason they ran Biden was because they, they feared prosecution. If uh, if Trump won, Biden's in trouble. Yeah. If any other Democrat won, Biden doesn't have any control and may get thrown under the bus. So let's say 2020, you know, let's just say hypothetically Newsom gets elected for all his faults and problems. When stories start breaking about the Bidens, their corruption, say these, these stories out of like Politico that came out, you know, almost 10 years ago, new, you know, any other Democrat might be like, look, we're not going to sacrifice the future of our administration because the mistakes and the problems you encountered. I do think they'd still probably protect him, but he would not have the power of the presidential seat to protect himself. So I wonder if a large component was, uh oh, Trump started looking into what we were doing in Ukraine. We better we better get Biden in so we can put an end to this. Because that's really was the big issue. Biden did not announce he was running for president. Trump calls Ukraine and says, hey, what's up with this video? They then claim in the media, Donald Trump was digging up dirt on his political opponent. As if the only thing they could have done is been like, uh, he's running for office. You can't do that. You can't, you can't look at these crimes. And then now he's got to run for office. You know what I mean? And Democrat media establishment fell in line right away and started immediately shifting the narrative that direction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that was going to go as soon as soon as there was someone that was establishment approved the the media was going to go all in anyways uh, that that there wasn't a whole lot of question but about that who's it going to be now is it going to be like Newsom I mean overwhelmingly the prediction markets are saying Joe Biden but, but he's, at like 60, he's at like sixty he's like sixty percent like he's the incumbent he should be a hundred percent. It is interesting seeing the way that like the fact that there's any competition at all kind of proves that uh, if you're not paying close attention, you wonder how that could possibly be. Because if you're not paying close attention, you just assume he's doing a great job. You don't know what's actually going on in the world. But if there's any competition at all, it does prove that there is a bit of a dent in the armor there. And it's hard for the average person to see. But just even hearing about an RFK, if you're somebody that doesn't pay close attention to politics, I would hope that would at least wake them up and be like, why is there anyone even questioning this at all you could actually i guess mention his age would be a big part of it like a lot of people even if they're not politically uh initiated might wonder why is a guy his age going to be running again trump's trump's fairly old as well yeah what what, what is what is 75 a year younger than biden he just doesn't show it no way he's more than he's he's, yeah yeah, he's four years four or five four or five like he will be the same age like he would have been the same age at the next election that biden was when he got elected Uh, and and i think what was rfk he's 69 Mm -hmm. or 70 Yeah, he's like 69 or 70. We yeah. need some younger people. I, I, I can absolutely understand. Vic! 
Vivek, yeah, Vivek's what, 38? Yeah, 30, he's, he's, he may be 37. He's young. Uh, but Ron DeSantis, too. I certainly understand that. But I got to tell you, man, if Ron is hurting this much in the polls and they're not course correcting, I I think that's a failure of leadership. I think the I, reason, I love his policy. I think the reason Ron is, is kind of tanking is because Ron doesn't have the charisma people thought that he was going to have. Like when he gets onto the onto the national stage, people aren't like he's not magnetic when he's on stage. Well, he do, doesn't they, have the charisma. He's not he's not like uh, uh, Barack Obama. He's not Bill Clinton. He's not Donald Trump. And those are three people that had really really significant charisma. And you, there's an argument that uh, that Bush had really good charisma as well. So. That could be it. But the, a big part of that is people like the idea that he was more stoic and that he could be a version of Trump without being more bombastic and that over was, the top. But that doesn't work once you actually have to come out and speak more regularly. Just because that was an argument doesn't mean that was actually what the, the country was going to feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it, and I'm just saying that this is this could be. I don't know. But it, it would make sense that the more people get exposed to him and hear him speak at, outside of just in the context of Florida, the less they actually like him. When he, you know? when they, when he felt like, cause I'm just, I'm not paying as close attention to that as I, as I was before. But when somebody mentioned like his stance on weed, I'm like, really, really? Like, even if that is your stance, why are you talking about it now? Why wouldn't you hold off and just not mention it? Like it just, it seems like well, a there, disconnection. There are still Republicans that yeah. like that, yeah. you know? Well, we, we can talk about uh, the viability of the Republicans, and uh, there will be more developments, of course. Maybe Ron DeSantis will uh, shift some of his campaign, really start to take off. It is early. There is a lot of opportunity for him there. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.